The Powerpuff Girls was a super popular show that debuted in 1998, but it wasn't always a wholesome show about little girls who fight crime. Keep watching to find out all the dark secrets about the Powerpuff Girls. Feeling nostalgic? Subscribe to The Things for more awesome nostalgia videos. And now it's time for 10 dark secrets about the Powerpuff Girls. Creepy Men the Powerpuff Girls are three sisters who were created in a lab by a professor. They are kindergarten age, but they fight crime like any other superhero. And in the crime-fighting business, they encounter a lot of creepy men. One of the villains is Lenny Baxter. The show passes him off as a super fan of the Powerpuff Girls, but even Buttercup realizes he's a total creep. He's got a collection of Powerpuff memorabilia, and Buttercup calls it Seven Kinds of Creepy. She's totally right. Lenny Baxter is so obsessed that he lures the girls and tries to kill Kidnap them. He's a grown man kidnapping little girls, and that's just wrong on so many levels. The mayor of Townsville is also pretty creepy. In one episode, he licks his pet cat. We're pretty sure kids totally miss this very adult joke, at least we sure hope so. And in the Powerpuff Girls, creepiness starts young. The girls have a total sadistic creep in their kindergarten class. Mitch is a mean bully. He spends a ton of time tormenting the class hamster. It's really pretty disturbing. We bet he grows up to be a villain. This is a villain so evil, so sinister, so horribly vile! The Devil's in the Details one of the main villains in the Powerpuff Girls is him. Yep, his name is just him. And if you take a close look, you might think he looks a little familiar. Him is based on traditional art of the devil. He's red with pointed ears, creepy claws like a lobster. He even has the same alias as the devil, King of Darkness. But the real shocking thing about him is how he dresses. Him wears a red mini dress with pink frills and a black leather belt. He's got knee-high, high-heeled boots, and he appears to wear a pink blush on his cheeks. Were the creators of the show trying to be funny, or were they expressing their opinions? Either way, this would not fly in today's cartoons. And him is definitely another one of those creepy men we talked about. He uses a lot of psychological manipulation and preys on Bubbles' naive personality. He's definitely the most deranged villain in the Powerpuff Girls. Retro References Although the Powerpuff Girls was a late 1990s hit show, there are many throwbacks to the 1950s and 1960s. The whole show is supposed to have a very retro, superhero vibe. A lot of the cheesiness is a throwback to the original Batman TV show from the 60s. It's campy and over the top, and the villains ride the fine line between crazy and comical. Also, the mayor of Townsville has a fancy office that is supposed to look like the office of Gotham's Commissioner Gordon from the original TV series. Him is also a tribute to another 1960s character. The show's creator, Craig McCracken, revealed that Him was inspired by a character named Chief Blue Meanie. He was in the very strange animated Beatles film, Yellow Submarine, from 1968. Yellow Submarine is a weird cult classic and has a lot of the same strangeness that we get in the Powerpuff Girls. Even the Powerpuff Girls' home is inspired by an old film. It is based on the home in the 1958 French film, Monocle. It's pretty cool that this movie is referenced in the Powerpuff Girls because it won the Oscar for Best Foreign film in 1959. Who knew Powerpuff Girls had so much class? Where in the world is Townsville? There is a lot of speculation about the location of Townsville, and the show never reveals exactly where it is, or does it? The narrator starts every episode with the city of Townsville. Where is this fictional place where kindergartners fight supervillains? The answer to the location is in the 2002 episode, Him Diddle Diddle. In this episode, Him leads the Powerpuff Girls on a scavenger hunt. The girls believe they are trying to solve the series of riddles to save Professor Utonium. But really, Him is just messing with them. He requires them to go somewhere without flying and stop two trains from colliding. They encountered two Miss Keens. One tells the truth and the other tells a lie in a scene reminiscent of The Labyrinth. Then they have to take the SATs. Amazingly, Bubbles got a really high score, even though she's in kindergarten. Finally, they have coordinates to find. These coordinates are 32 degrees north and 212 degrees west. If you put these into real coordinates, Townsville is supposedly located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So it's safe to say Townsville is a very made-up place. Punishment Most Foul 
Buttercup, Blossom, and Bubbles may be adorable little girls, but they are also pretty ruthless when it comes to crime fighting. In one episode, the mayor offers the girls candy as a reward. They become addicted and attack Mojo really badly. Seriously, they leave his brain exposed. That's not exactly kid-friendly crime fighting. Another criminal, the Sandman, meets an even worse fate at the hands of the Powerpuff Girls. The Sandman tries to make everyone sleep forever because he's exhausted. The Powerpuff Girls give him a nightmare so terrifying he never sleeps again. You can't live long with no sleep. That's an awful punishment. And it's not just the Powerpuff Girls that are ruthless. The criminals aren't always family-friendly either. One time, a zombie magician tries to end Blossom's life in a spiked coffin after mistaking her for the girl who led him to his fate. And then there's the episode set in the future, which looks like something from Mad Max instead of a kid's cartoon. Adult Original Concept the Powerpuff Girls didn't always have such a cutesy name. They had a way more adult-sounding name, but the original concept was more or less the same. The show's creator, Craig McCracken, originally had a bad word in the title. It's something you would open a can of if you were fighting someone. Cartoon Network made him change the name to Powerpuff. It's a pretty great change because it sounds like a dainty powder puff, but really they are totally tough triplets. We couldn't imagine them with such a vulgar name, especially since they are five years old. The original episode was a three-minute short film McCracken created at CalArts. The whoop ass girls were born. In it, the girls faced the Amoeba Boys. They fried the boys on the surface of the sun. Talk about brutal. Cartoon Network made McCracken tone it down, but he still left in some pretty intense stuff. These kindergartners are way more mature. Think that's a dark secret? Stay tuned to find out what they don't want you to know. Sedusa. Sedusa is a reoccurring villain in The Powerpuff Girls. She goes undercover and uses aliases a lot, and she's definitely meant for more mature audiences. One time, she is disguised as Miss Bellum. She tries to get the mayor to take the night off. She has a very adult scene where she helps the mayor sharpen his pencil, and it's more than just suggestive. The mayor enjoys it way too much. We can't believe this is in a cartoon meant for kids. Later, Blossom dresses up as Miss Bellum by stuffing her shirt with stuffed animals. In another episode, she is disguised as I'm a good lady and goes on a date with the professor. Buttercup sticks something in his pocket before the date. It's hinting that it's something to keep him from having any more, mm, let's just say, accidents. It's pretty much a guarantee that whenever Sedusa is involved, things are going to get inappropriate. We understand that she's a total femme fatale, but does that really belong in a kid's show? Maybe she's just there to make the adults laugh instead. No girls allowed. It's not that hard to see all the girl power in this classic cartoon, but there is one episode in particular that really shows the three sisters facing misogyny. And they beat that just like it was another villain. In the episode Members Only, the Powerpuff Girls aspire to join the Association of World Supermen. They pass all their tests easily, beating several famous superheroes at competitions. But then the leader of the association gives a super anti-girl speech. The girls aren't allowed in because they are girls. They even talk about how they don't have mom, but their dad does all the work of both mom and dad. The association doesn't like this. They believe that men should do certain things and women should do others. But then the Powerpuff Girls end it by saving the entire association of world supermen, and they change their tune. Cartoons may try not to get too political, but it's hard to deny the feminist overtones in this episode. We love that the Powerpuff Girls are even better than all the other superheroes, and we love that their dad does the cooking and the laundry. The Rowdy Rough Boys are a reoccurring group on the Powerpuff Girls. They are pretty similar to the girls. Even their names start with the letter B, but they are created by Mojo Jojo. Mojo tricked Professor Utonium into giving him the recipe the professor used to create the Powerpuff Girls, and then Mojo made it more masculine, using armpit hair, snails, and a puppy dog tail. These boys have a lot of weakness, and their masculinity is definitely fragile. All the Powerpuff Girls have to do to defeat them is kiss them, but later, him gives them a cootie shot. After the shot, kisses make them bigger and stronger. Now they have to have their masculinity threatened to be defeated. When they are embarrassed or insulted, the rowdy rough boys shrink in size. The Powerpuff Girls defeat them by doing embarrassing things to them, like baby them and pull down their pants. This is definitely a joke about other things that are small when masculinity is threatened. The rowdy rough boys are bullies, but we also don't recommend doing the things that girls do to them in retaliation. 
Reboot controversy. And now it's time for the big secret the creators of the Powerpuff Girls don't want you to know. You might know that the Powerpuff Girls show was rebooted in 2016. It's currently on its third season. Well, not everyone was excited about this. When the new voice actors were announced, the original voice actors were super upset. Tara Strong, the voice of the original Bubbles, tweeted, I don't remember ordering a stab in the heart today. The original Buttercup Elizabeth Daly also was not happy. Kathy Cavadini, the original Blossom was a lot more diplomatic. She wished the new girls well, but she said it hurt her heart not to be recast. The original Mojo Jojo Professor Utonium and the mayor did return. However, we aren't sure why they decided to pick all new girls to voice the crime-fighting sisters, but we think the new voices and the original voices are incredible. The new show is obviously doing well, even with the new voice actor controversy. It's already up to 86 episodes. Do you think they should have cast the original voice actors for the Powerpuff Girls? Let us know in the comments! Those are the 10 dark secrets about the Powerpuff Girls. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Things!